California has finally passed a landmark sustainable fashion bill and I'm so excited to tell you all about it. It will basically reduce textile waste and promote a circular fashion economy by 2030. If you're new here, I'm Elle and welcome to my ethical fashion YouTube channel. I upload weekly so feel free to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. So in this video we will explore Senate Bill 707 also known as SB 707 or the Responsible Textile Recovery Act of 2024 or the Act. So let's get into it. What what is this act about? Well, this pioneering legislation is the first in the U.S. to target textile waste through a strict textile recycling program. It was signed into law by Governor Gavin Newsom in September 2024, and the act basically places the responsibility for managing the life cycle of clothing, textile products, and manufacturers, aiming to really reduce textile waste in landfills significantly. And the act mandates that manufacturers and brands selling textiles in California take an active role in the entire life cycle of its products from production all the way to disposal and this approach known as the extended producer responsibility EPR is designed to reduce the environmental impacts of textiles by holding producers accountable for the waste their products create and it was first introduced as the responsible textile recovery act of 2023 by senators John Newman Nancy Skinner and Scott Weiner and it was later passed out of the Senate floor in May 31 1st, 2023, and the bill proposed the establishment of the Extended Producer Responsibility Aspect, also known as EPR, for apparel, textiles, and textile items, similar to the existing Californian Integrated Waste Management Act of 1989. The bill was later amended in 2024 to require the producers of apparel or textiles to form and join a producer responsibility organization, also known as PRO. And it was later ratified, like I said, in September 2024 by Governor Gavin Newsom with the amendment that qualifying producers of apparel or textile articles form and join a producer responsibility organization, the PRO, which can be understood as a industry-led group approved by California's Department of Resources, Recycling and Recovery, also known as Kale Cycle. And this process will start as soon as July 1st, 2026 to ensure that textiles are collected, sorted, and repaired and reused and recycled efficiently across the state. And you must be asking, why is California doing this? Why are they tackling textile waste? Why is it important? Well, according to Kale Cycle, in 2021 alone, California disposed of 1.2 million tons of textiles, and textile waste is among the fastest growing contributors to the state's landfill, which is representing about 3% of total landfill waste. And given that the U.S. recycled only about 14.7 of all textiles in 2018, it's clear that textile waste management is really an urgent issue. And almost 95% of textiles are recyclable, yet millions of tons of them end up in landfills each year which really does add up to environmental pollution and so the question now is like who must comply well the act covers a broad range of products including clothing accessories household textiles and this really influences who is held responsible because small businesses making less than one million dollars according to the act will not be held accountable and then sellers of only secondhand textiles are also exempt and in the case of online sales marketplaces will be required to inform kale recycle about sellers who meet these thresholds and they must communicate the act's requirements to sellers. It is definitely not a super straightforward process, but the act is trying to define the word producer based on a tiered system of responsibility. And there's this thing called primary responsibility, which falls on the manufacturer. And then there's secondary responsibility, which is tied with exclusive licensees or importers. And if no producer is identified, the responsibility then shifts to distributors or retailers who sell the products in California. And so there are key requirements under the act. And one of them is the producer responsibility organizations part of it. So this should be starting by July 1st, 2026, where qualifying producers must join a PRO, which will develop a comprehensive textile recovery plan. And this plan will include accessible collection and recycling systems such as drop-off points and mail bag programs. And it will all be to properly manage textile waste. And it will also require producers to address hazardous chemicals like PFAs, which are often used in textiles, but are banned in California for their harmful environmental and health effects. And by 2028, companies will start implementing things that are more extensive, like I said, the clothing drop-offs, the mailbag programs, the recycling incentives, and there are incentive-based fees. So to fund these programs, each participating producer will pay something called the eco-modulated fee. Basically means that producers using more sustainable practices, for example, creating 
being easily recyclable products will pay reduced fees, while those using less sustainable materials will face higher fees to encourage them to consider the recyclability of their products. So there are also compliance and penalties obviously to this. So to ensure compliance, Kales Recycle will publish a list of participating and non-compliant producers. And starting around 2030, there will also be more fines which can range from 10 to 50k thousand dollars a day fees if you're violating the act. And I really do think this is a milestone for sustainable fashion legislation. I think it's a step forward for sustainable fashion, especially if you're an advocate for sustainability and are a, an environmentalist. I think it does encourage producers to take responsibility for textile disposal. California is definitely pushing things forward, making sure brands are held accountable to rethink their production, reduce their waste, and support that circular economy that we all need. And hopefully more brands begin to invest in repair, reuse, recycling initiatives because of this, and to really think more about creating eco-friendly collections as they work to meet the act's requirements. And I think this bill also directly challenges fast fashion's model by holding companies accountable to textile waste. I think accountability is such a great step forward. It really does help them see the full life cycle of their collections and possibly slow down these cycles of disposable fashion that we see in fast fashion. And I really hope that more sustainable options can be more accessible and affordable because of it. In terms of long-term success, I really want this bill to work out. I think I want to see other states try to pass similar bills and further accelerate sustainable fashion initiatives and laws through this example, through textile waste reduction, and in the word of Governor Newsom, which I really resonate with, by 2030, convenient drop-off locations for used textiles across the state will provide everyone with a free and simple way to be part of the solution. California is again at the forefront of innovation, proving that we can lead the way in creating a more circular and sustainable textile economy that benefits everyone. And so I think the sustainable fashion bill really represents a hopeful step forward forward for me. I think we all need more shared responsibility, especially between producers and consumers, to really tackle textile waste and really make a world possible where we're protecting the planet, promoting a circular fashion system, and building a more ethical and sustainable fashion industry. I would love to know your thoughts of what you think of the California Responsible Textile Recovery Act and if you have any criticisms or anything that you would want in this to happen. Until next time, peace and love, L. Bye.